Well, the U.S. sanctions are aimed at fewer than 200 individuals and institutions in Zimbabwe in a nation of over 13 million people. Um, they are very targeted. Uh, and the Zimbabwe economy is absolutely struggling. Um, that was a clear message that we heard from people on our visit there. Um, but for explanations, I would point to the World Bank's ease of doing business report, mm -hmm. where Zimbabwe is in the bottom 20 countries in the world in terms of ease of countries being able to make investments and do business and operate. Mm -hmm. But uh, recently we've seen that uh, the European Union uh, has uh, um, decided to have a policy shift. It is engaging uh, the Zimbabwe government. That is uh, in contrast to the position that uh, Washington has taken. Uh, don't you feel uh, pressured to at least uh, use that model? We don't feel pressured. Um, the European Union uh, obviously makes its own policy choices, um, but I think we continue to share with them the same fundamental goals of seeing a freer, democratic uh, Zimbabwe that adheres to the rule of law and other standards. Uh, let's uh, talk about uh, the human rights uh, situation. What did you observe? Um, we met uh, extensively with, with people in and out of government to talk about the human rights situation. In particular, we raised the disappearance of Mr. Itai Zamara, um, who has been uh, missing for over two months and whose uh, continuing disappearance is a subject of great concern to people there and here in Washington. And uh, do you think uh, from uh, what you are hearing that uh, the government is doing enough uh, to find Mr. Zamara? I think uh, the United States believes they should certainly do more. Um, we made that point as strongly as we could. And uh, talking about uh, the civil society in uh, uh, Zimbabwe, what is your, your take? Are you still willing to engage them? What is the position? Oh, we, do you think uh, they can actually like, uh, do more? Um, we always in, uh, have been engaging with civil society. And I think um, one of the things that always impresses me there is the vibrancy of civil society in Zimbabwe, of the youth groups that we met with, of women's groups and others um, who are you know, dedicated to creating a, a better situation for themselves, for their communities, for their country. <laughs> Let's uh, turn, turn to the opposition uh, political uh, parties, your take. Um, I mean, the opposition is um, clearly dividing. Um, that, that's a statement of fact. Um, and you know, that process uh, will follow its course as it does. Um, for us, it is less about political parties than it is about the political ideas and messages that we think that the Zimbabwean people probably most want to hear, um, particularly the need to create more jobs and economic opportunities and to address fundamental political rights. Mm -hmm. uh, concern for most uh, Zimbabweans is actually that, uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, wars in Africa. Uh, talk about Boko Haram in Nigeria, uh, Al Shabaab in Somalia, you know, uh, there's another problem in uh, Burundi. People are saying, is Zimbabwe not uh, falling off the radar? Uh, is uh, Washington still uh, engaged, you know, in what is happening in Zimbabwe? Yeah. Well, along with my fellow Deputy Assistant Secretary, I went to Zimbabwe precisely because Zimbabwe is not falling off the radar. It does matter. It matters to people in Southern Africa. It matters to people here. <laughs> the country has also plunged into a multifaceted crisis. Right, um, from which it is struggling to escape, uh, worsening the humanitarian uh, uh, situation, uh, the economy is not doing very well. What is Washington uh, doing to assist the people of Zimbabwe? Well, um, I agree that the country is in a, a worsening situation and I know that people are worried about the maize crops this year and drought situation and other humanitarian issues. The um, United States has provided um, uh, extensive assistance to Zimbabwe over the years. In the fight against HIV AIDS alone, we've provided a half billion dollars over the last decade um, and have worked in partnership with non-governmental organizations, faith-based organizations, and the Ministry of Health to help fight HIV AIDS and other challenges. Let's talk about uh, uh, Washington's uh, relationship with Harare, uh, particularly the ruling ZANU-PF party. Uh, is it changing? Um, the relationship with uh, the government of Zimbabwe is not fundamentally changing. Um, our visit there was part of a process of ongoing diplomatic engagement, um, as we do with most countries in the world, um, and to meet with officials, to raise our concerns, to hear theirs. Um, that's a normal diplomatic conversation. It doesn't signal any change in policy. And that, as we said while we were there, um, we were not there to announce any uh, major policy changes. We were there to talk to people, and we were happy to do that. And uh, lastly, I think uh, there's a concern about uh, Zimbabwe's future. Mr. Mugabe obviously is uh, 91. Uh, there are 
succession uh, battles in his own party. Uh, your take on the future of Zimbabwe, is it easy to determine what will happen next and probably what are you doing to prepare for that eventuality? I mean, the, the future of Zimbabwe is in its own hands, clearly. Uh, that every country uh, has processes in place to deal with those kind of questions. Um, that our emphasis is on the importance of adhering to the rule of law in such processes. And um, we always hope for the best for the people of Zimbabwe. But are there no fears uh, that there might be a chaos in Zimbabwe? Um, that is not the message that I heard from people on my trip. Thank, Thank you so much. Right. Uh, Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you.